After nearly 1,000 hours of playing Grounded and watching many new players play the game, I put together a list of the most common mistakes I see being made. Avoid these mistakes and your experience playing through Grounded will be infinitely more enjoyable. Don't choose custom mode for your save. The reason you don't want to do this if you're first playing through the game or if you want to earn achievements is you cannot earn achievements if you choose custom game mode. When you're starting a new save, you're going to have the option of going mild, medium, well, creative, creative with bugs, or custom. The only way to earn achievements is using the mild, medium, or woe mode. Medium is the default difficulty. Mild is easier. Woe is more difficult. You can later on change your change the game to a custom game mode. So what I would recommend doing when you're starting a new save is to go with mild, medium, or woe. When you're if it's the first time playing through and you want to earn those achievements, once you've unlocked all the achievements, you can change it to custom. Or on a second playthrough, you can use the custom game mode. Don't forget to peep every creature. If you're new to the game or if you're just returning to the game, they did add a feature called peeper mode. What you can do is you can actually peep the creatures. The reason you're going to want to do this is going to show their strengths and weaknesses. So on keyboard, it's X. On controller, it's Y. These are the default settings. Make sure you go in and check to see if you've changed anything. What this is going to do is it's going to show you, give you a creature card for each creature in the game. It's going to show you their weaknesses and resistances and any weak points they have. As you can see here, the aphids have no weakest weaknesses or resistances. This is going to be really useful when you're fighting beefier enemies later on in the game. Even the tier two enemies, it'll be very helpful so you know which weapons to use against them, which weapons not to use against them, which upgrade paths to go and which ones not to go. Don't forget to analyze every new resource you find. So when you start the game off, it's going to send you to this field station right here, which is just after the spawn. There's going to be a little exclamation point sending you over here. What it's going to do is tell you to analyze resources or base. It says analyze a pebble up there at the top. And what you'll do is you'll go up to the analyze resource analyzer here. And if something can be analyzed, it will have a little exclamation point up here. There's different colors depending on the rarity. As you can see here, the pebblet is common. So what we're going to do is just select that and analyze it. One thing I have seen people do, and this is just part of this tip, is don't forget to analyze grass planks and weed stems, which can be cut down. When you cut those down, what you'll have to do is have them in your hand equipped, and you'll walk in here and analyze them. Those will unlock some of the early game things that you're going to need that are super important and helpful for the game. Don't forget to spend your raw science. So throughout the game, you're going to earn raw science by just finding it in the world. You also get it from completing quests for Burgle. And what you're going to see is if you go into the inventory screen, you will see how much raw science you have up here in the purple. And you can go to the, any of the ASL terminals, which can be found at any of the field stations. Go over here to the science shop, and you'll see an option of things to purchase with your raw science. So make sure you're going in here and purchasing these things. Don't forget to complete your three daily burgle quests. This is super important early on in the game when you're just starting out because this is a great way to get raw science. You can get burgle quests by walking up to the ASL terminal and then going to the center slide here, it says burgle quest, clicking on it, and then you'll see you'll get different quests. The different types of quests are hunter, artificer. So hunters are gonna be where you're gonna be killing a specific enemy. Artificers are crafting things. And then there's also some for turning in specific burgle chips, as well as placing down different trail markers early on in the game. You can get up to three daily burgle quests today. So make sure you're completing all three of them. If you forget to do them, you can complete them and then go back to the ASL terminal and get three more. Just make sure you're completing them. This is especially uh, useful early on for getting tons of raw science and unlocking everything faster. Don't forget to return the burgle chips to burgle. During the game, Burgle is going to quest you with finding different Burgle chips. You'll find those by, he will show you where they are on the map by showing you these little blinking missing Burgle chips. They'll be scattered around the map. As you collect those, make sure you take them back to Burgle because what ends up happening is once you turn them in, it's going to unlock different options from the science shop. It's also going to give you raw science as it is also a quest. Don't forget to equip mutations. As you're playing through the game, exploring, completing various activities, you will unlock mutations. You can find your mutations by going to the status tab. And what you'll see here is I have all these mutations unlocked and none of them are actually active. You do have to activate them. You activate them by clicking on them and then going down to the bottom and pressing whatever your button is that says activate mutation. Once it's active, you will see that it's purple. The ones that are not purple are not active. The ones that are not showing a icon here have not been unlocked yet. What I want to recommend is don't forget to equip as many as you have available. By default, you have two available. So make sure you have at least two equipped once you've unlocked them. As you unlock the third, fourth, and fifth slots later on using the milk molars, make sure you're equipping the third, fourth, and fifth ones so that you have all five mutation slots activated at any given time. Don't forget to equip a dandelion tuft. You'll find dandelion tusks by cutting down dandelions. As you can see, there's a dandelion right there. When you cut those down, they will drop the dandelion tufts. 
you can equip them by putting them in the glider slot right here. So you'll put that in here. And what this does is it prevents you from taking fall damage. So I'm going to jump off of here. I have full health, so I'm not going to die. But if you jump, if you fall from a high distance and do not use the dandelion tough, you will take fall damage. As you can see, you're going to want to make sure you have those equipped as soon as you're able to. Always have one equipped just in case you need to jump from a high distance or in case you fall from a high distance so you don't end up taking critical fall damage. Don't drown. This might sound like an obvious thing not to do. However, the way the swimming in this game works is a little bit different than other games. In other games, when you go underwater, you will have a little oxygen meter like this, as you can see. In other games I've played, the oxygen meter, when it hits zero, in Subnautica, for example, your screen will start fading to black and you have a couple seconds to get back up to or to a place that has oxygen. In other games I've played, the once the bar hits zero, you will actually start losing HP. In grounded, once that eight, once that O2 bar hits zero seconds, you will die. There is no, there's no escaping it. So make sure your oxygen level does not hit down to where it says zero seconds, so you do not drown. Do not upgrade tier one gear. This includes both armor and weapons. Early on in the game, you're gonna get access to purchase the smithing station from the Burgle Science Shop. It will allow you to upgrade all of your gear. You will upgrade your gear using the tough nuggets and the style nuggets, which you will be able to find. Later on, you'll be able to craft them. But the reason you don't wanna upgrade your tier one gear is to be completely honest, there's not a lot of the tier one nuggets to be found around the world early on, and you're not gonna be able to upgrade many things. And what's gonna end up happening is if you spend too many of them, there's a possibility, especially if you're playing in multiplayer, you could get to a point where there's not enough nuggets to upgrade the gear you're gonna you're the gear you actually want to upgrade. So I would recommend holding off on upgrading anything until you get to the tier two weapons and the tier two armors because you should be able to get access to them pretty early on. Don't purchase the glue masher until you can upgrade weapons. Early on in the game, you're gonna get access to purchase the glue masher from the science shop. So we're gonna go in the science shop here and you're gonna see advanced missing station glue masher. The reason you do not wanna purchase this early on, even though it's only 500 raw science, is because the, the repair glue can only be used to repair gear that is level six and above. You're not gonna be able to upgrade your gear to level six and above until much later in the game. So wait until you can actually upgrade your gear to level six and above before you purchase the glue masher. Don't forget to use your milk molars. So milk molars can be will be shown up here in your inventory next to the raw science. You're gonna see the regular milk molars and the mega milk molars. When you find them in the world, they will look like this. There'll be a giant white tooth and a giant gold tooth. You'll break them open with a tier two or tier three hammer. Once you are able to do that, you are able to go to the ASL and purchase upgrades by going to the molar infusion upgrades tab over here. Hit this, go in here. You're gonna see the milk molars are able to unlock max, more max health, more max stamina. Higher, uh, lower thirst burn, lower hunger burn, and more mutation slots. And then for the Mega Milk Molars, you can increase your stack sizes for consumables, resources, and arrows. Don't build where human food spawns. As you're exploring the map, you're gonna discover locations where you're gonna find apples, you're gonna find hot dogs and cookies that will spawn around the map. They do spawn in the exact same locations. There's different spots around the map. As you can see here, I am under the hedge and this is a apple. There could be an apple, a cookie, or a hot dog here. If I chop this up and collect the resources for it and then decide to build where it's located, what'll end up happening is when it's time for this thing to respawn or the cookie or the hot dog, it's going to respawn right inside of my base. So you don't want to build there. I've done this before, tested it out. You cannot block the food from spawning in. Don't craft crude rope by hand once you've unlocked the spinning wheel. What you can do is instead of crafting crude rope by hand, you can use a spinning wheel. So if you go into your menu and you try to craft crude rope, you're gonna see it costs three plant fiber for every crude rope. However, if you go up to the spinning wheels, it only costs one plant fiber. You can make five at a time per spinning wheel. This is gonna be useful as soon as you unlock the spinning wheel. Don't craft berry leather by hand. Use the jerky rack instead. So if you try to craft berry leather by hand, it's going to cost three berry chunks per leather, but you also need a workbench. Instead, what you can do is use a jerky rack. So by selecting the jerky rack, you can actually hang the berry leather and three chunks will now turn into three leather instead of three chunks turning into one leather. If you found this video helpful, then you'll definitely wanna watch this video where I tell you which armor and weapons are best to get you through most of the game.